Hello and welcome to my workshop. Um, so today we are going to uh, strip this part of the head, this mechanism for the head and um, we're going to make uh, whatever is necessary, bracketry and what have you for the Z axis. Um, hopefully we'll get it done in one video. So Right, I've just um, taken the head of this all the way up so I can have a look inside because um, I, I was sort of peering through this hole and I noticed the other side there was a corresponding uh, bore. So what I've decided to do is I've got some 25mm by, by 50mm which is uh, 1 inch by 2 inch aluminium bar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in the full jaw chuck and I am going to machine down approximately between 5 and 8 mil in depth but leave a boss on it to actually fit inside this hole here and then I'm going to bore a hole inside that boss and thread it. Uh, I'm going to put a clearance hole through on the other side and put this bolt all the way through all the way through and screw into that boss and then I'm going to put um, a secondary hole then I'm going to drill a hole through here um, about an inch and a half away from this main boss and thread it and put one of these in because the holes he that are here um, they're only they're only five mil and um, I don't regard them as man enough for the for the job to you know, sort of hold it all up square. Um, so I, I like things to be built well. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, so then onto that, um, I am going to put onto this when it's put on here. I will then solidly bolt a piece of this that will have the um, the ball machined out of it um, for this ball nut to fit in. So it's going to look like, and what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to bring this ball screw around to this side, okay, in line with this main column, uh, instead of having it out on the front. So I want to bring it right back here um, on the side out of the way of um, out of the way of swarf and shavings and what have you. Um, I have toyed with the idea of putting down through the middle here. There's just not enough clearance, not for my liking anyway, uh, between where the stepper motor is going to be and this drive motor. Uh, there's not enough. Um, area for uh, adjustment because I plan on actually not giving two uh, speeds but three um, for, the, for, the, for the future. Um, so what I've decided to do is bring this uh, right around the side of the column here out of the way and on the bottom of the column I will probably put another bearing and housing uh, just to hold it all up nice and square and solid. So that's the plan. So the first job is to cut some of this off and um, just roughly cut it off and uh, square it up a bit in the mill and put it in the full jaw chuck and machine down one side and leave, leave in a boss in the full jaw chuck. Now that might be interesting for you to see. So, Okay, I've trued all this in now. Um, within a cup of thou and that's my area that I want to go down to so I don't want to go any further than that um, so that will leave me with the with the, with the boss 
and if I set this tool up, cut, I don't want to go any deeper than 5mm. So today our job is to carve out uh, from a, a, a two inch square uh, piece of aluminium bar uh, the mounting the main boss. mounting boss uh, for the Z axis that's going to be mounted on top of the on top of the tower or the Z axis um, dovetail column uh, very very solidly I like a very solid fixture. I don't um, like uh, the idea of just screwing straight on the face of the, the dovetail. Um, so mine is going to encompass uh, the actual column itself, uh, at least two faces of it, uh, and it's going to be bolted on very solidly. Uh, there will be, however, some uh, that you will be able to adjust it by shims, uh, not just by moving and screwing up tight. I don't regard that as very, shall we say, professional, in engineering terms anyway. Um, so what I want to do with you today, uh, or, or the, particularly now, is I want to show you the difference between conventional milling and Klein milling and the effect that it gives on or leaves on the material afterwards. Okay. Uh, the cutter we're using is a 19 millimeter or three quarters of an inch four flute uh, carbide uh, end mill uh, and uh, we're, we're actually taking uh, let me see about a 33 percent about a third of the cutter's diameter uh, cut uh, across this material and it's uh, approximately ooh, what's that about eight or nine millimeter deep something like that um, so First, we're going to cut in that direction. So this is classed as or called um, conventional milling. So we'll see the effect of. Uh, so what I want you to do is watch this surface here. You see this surface here, the cut that's left behind. Okay, you may have noticed that the, as the cutter is turning in a, let me see, it's an anti-clockwise direction, I think, isn't it? Looking up that way, anti-clockwise. Um, so what's happening? It's cutting the, it's going into the material here, this in this direction, cut in, and the 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 chip then that comes off. Some of it is staying on the tooth like that, and it's been carried back around. Um, with the, the the cutting edge 
and being deposited back on the material, virtually being welded back on. So it leaves a very coarse, rough finish. You notice it's a very coarse, rough finish. So, climb milling, we will now uh, bring the cutter, or actually bring the bed further over this way. So the cutter will be tending to want to, cl to climb out of the material. Okay, so it's going to be biting in this direction. And you will see what sort of a finish um, that does. So we'll do the same depth of cut here. Which is about f uh, five or six mil, I think it is. And we will do a climb mill process. Okay, so you can see it is a very, it's left behind a very, very clean cut. So that's the difference between conventional milling and climb milling. Uh, when you climb mill, you bite into the material and evacuate the chips from out from the back of the tool. And it doesn't uh, actually carry on round and deposit back on the, the um, the face of the material that you're leaving behind. So that's the difference. Right, this next operation, um, I want a nice square corner in there. Well, I can't actually machine a square corner into there. Uh, very easily. So what I'm doing is I'm getting a six mil four fluke end mill and I'm going to plunge down through the corner there and through the corner here to get rid of these radii here. Um, it's probably not going to look spectac spectacularly pretty but um, it'll do the job. We've machined now our main, shall we say, bracketry um, to support our Z axis now. See if it fits. Right, so um, the way I've machined this, this is where it fits on, it fits on there like this. You see? Now, so what I've done is I've wrapped it, I have a contact, a good uh, flat contact surface area here, here, and two here. Uh, so that was that's what I was picking up. So this surface here corresponds with this surface here, this surface here corresponds with this surface here, and this surface here corresponds with the uh, surface uh, here. And it fits perfectly there, like that, like so. All nice, square and flat. Uh, unfortunately, the, the, the top of the pillar is not ground flat, really flat. Uh, it's just roughly ground. Um, so what I'm going to do is, again, leave half a millimetre uh, clearance on the holes here. So I'm going to have um, three bolted areas, heavy bolted areas. Uh, I'm going to be using these these bolts here and these are 8-8 eight, eight, uh, hardness. So I'm going to put one in here, um, one in here and one in the middle there um, which will be you know will, will um, be more than enough and uh, it will hold this really, really firm. Uh, I was really against on uh, relying on resting on the top of here, because this is not, like I say, it's not ground square, and just having a, a couple of small bolts in the front surface here, like other um, 
shall we say, like other uh, kits that you can buy, um, rely on. In my book, it's not good enough. So, there we go. Good solid. Uh, maybe classed as overkill, but that's okay. This then uh, gets mounted onto here. And I'm going to have the double thrust bearing in here. And um, obviously, ball screw in here. I'll um, connect it all up. And uh, first, well, first, my next job now is to uh, bore through these areas, uh, drill and tap the actual uh, column here. And um, then I want to bore this through. Um, make the or cut the, uh, the the screw off to length and uh, mount it all up in here and then find exactly where this goes in relation to it all uh, on here um, so it's perfect so that's the next job okay so we've um, Machined all, all this out now, and we, and I've actually um, pre-drilled the three um, locating holes or bolting holes to bolt onto the top of this pillar. Um, also, what I've done, I've just taken a file and just taken the the corner off there and there uh, to make sure that it doesn't um, hold up in in here uh, and hold it away from. So we get a nice snug, clean fit onto these three surfaces here. This one, this one, and this face here. So I'm going to pick up this original hole. And what I've done is I've, I've drilled an oversized hole there. Okay. Now this is to, um, <laughs> and an undersized hole here and here. And that's how I'm going to uh, produce the unit. Because, uh, like I mentioned earlier, the top of these pillars are not machined, um, should we say, perfectly square. And to get to strip this down and put onto another mill and machine it totally square, it's it's a fairly big deal, especially if you haven't got a mill. <laughs> and um, so what I'm trying to do is make a this kit as much as bolt on as I can but obviously there is a few areas where you're going to need um, minimal uh, equipment uh, such as a you know a cordless drill and a set of drills and maybe a, a very cheap not very cheap don't buy cheap um, you know uh, uh, should we say a minimal set of um, of um, taps and dies a uh, half dozen or so um, which you know you're gonna you're gonna need because you're gonna need to drill two holes here and thread them. Um, so because the top of this is not, uh, shall we say, consistent, uh, and I know that it's this is out you know maybe half a degree. Well, half a degree for this um, ball and nut is a lot <laughs> so we can't be out half a degree so what you're going to have to do is pick up this bolt hole okay uh, now this is uh, this gives a millimeter and a half clearance either side of the you know, you, you're fixing uh, because that's the tolerance that you're going to have to have with this just this one hole and so we pick this one hole up like this okay and good steel washer on it we put that in there like that and we just ease it just ease it up um, and check to see whether no see it's actually away from there a bit so we've got to there we go and that surface is on there quite tightly and on there. 
So then what we need to do is get a square and check to see Okay, that is pretty square there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark these holes now uh, onto the cast iron with, with, a, with a drill. And um, you know, just give them a, a good mark here and here uh, because these holes are undersized as well. And then I'll remove this, drill them through uh, with the correct size uh, uh, drill to tap the thread and um, we'll tap the thread through here and here so we're doing that right now I think it's video number 138, 138, uh, but I do devote a whole video um, on tapping threads, uh, basically in aluminium, um, but cast iron is actually the easiest material to, um, to actually tap a thread in, it's uh, because when you cut into it, uh, the shavings come off like powder and it doesn't block the tap up at all. So you'll notice that very rarely do I, do I turn backwards because there's no need to because it comes off like that. Dust. Uh, and even the larger shavings are not very big. So yes, it's very very easy to, uh, to drill and tap uh, a thread. But once you have and you put a bolt in it it's very, very strong. Um, because I've had such a, a, a lot going on here, as in um, machining, measuring and machining this, and measuring and machining this, um, and, and actually preceding this uh, video, I, I did uh, put together a video of um, uh, using AppCam to actually draw the um, or make the tool pass to do this pocket and how I a full uh, video of how I used our cam to do that very simple job but it's very time consuming to, to actually try and uh, show someone I suppose but I, I've done that um, and I showed you a bit of machining of this on the uh, CNC router um, however, I, I omitted, I don't know why, but I omitted to video um, NC Studio. Um, but I will in the next video uh, put some information about NC Studio for you. Um, I have a mountain of recorded information that I think I'm going to uh, put onto a, a, a video and upload, which will be this video. Um, because otherwise it's going to be too long and too complex uh, and yeah so I'll put a video of what I've done so far with the z-axis um, because as you know I like to show you as much information as I can so if you want to go and replicate um, you can so this is video number 141 and uh, I hope you've uh, liked it uh, and I hope you do like it press like and uh, please um, uh, if you press a little red, red box down there uh, that will take you to my YouTube channel where there I, uh, hopefully there's a lot of information there and a lot of videos there that you will uh, you'll find interesting on CNC routing uh, wood turning uh, woodwork in general making cabinets or workshop cabinets or whatever and um, now obviously uh, doing some uh, modifications and some upgrades and CNC conversions and uh, I like to keep your attention <laughs> and judging by the emails I'm getting and the uh, whatever everybody's writing in uh, I've got your attention so 
um, thank you very much for watching and uh, I hope to see you here um, again on one of my other videos or the next video uh, actually uh, I, I'm starting to rush now uh, because uh, I've been called back to China to, to do my job with my business and um, I'm still hoping to get this totally finished but I'm now down to the last couple of days um, so if I if I haven't finished it and I, I'm unable to finish it for a before I go, look, I, I apologize, um, but rest assured, uh, I'll take up the uh, the gauntlet and um, finish it as quickly as I can when I come back. So for now, it's bye for now.